Well, hello everyone. It's so good to be with you today. Welcome to Thursday's edition of Take 5. Now this week we are identifying the characteristics of sowing and reaping. That's the analogy that God uses so that we can better understand the way that he will bless us back for our giving into the kingdom or giving to someone who has a need. If you have just a little bit of knowledge about what it is to plant a seed and then reap a harvest from that seed, whatever kind it is, then you should be able to understand God's design and God's purpose behind our giving. Now, it's not so that we can get rich. Please throw that idea away. If, if you've been with me at any time at all, and especially during this past seven weeks, I've told you that over and over and over again. You're not giving so you can get. That's not what it's all about. But that is a promise that God has made that he would bring that back to us. Now, he doesn't always bring it back to us in, in multiplied dollars. He does it all. There's all kind of ways that God brings it back to us. And, and what needs to be the most important is that we have the heart to give, not that we're giving so that we can get. We've got to throw that selfish, uh, you know, gospel casino mentality away and do this thing God's way. So we've identified eight different characteristics of sowing and reaping. We've got about six more we're going to do today and tomorrow. So let's jump into that so we can get them today. Number nine, continual obedience in giving is what ensures a harvest. Continual obedience. Uh, that means you do it always. That, that doesn't mean you do it now and then you stop. And then when you think about it, you pick it up again later. Not sporadic, but continual obedience is what ensures a harvest. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 makes this very clear. It says, he that observes the wind will not sow, then he that regards the clouds will not reap. So you, you have to do it continually regardless of the season that you are in and regardless of what's going on in your life. God expects us to give continually. As you do not know what is the way of the wind or how the bones grow in the womb of her that's with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. So you give continually because you don't know how and when God is going to bring that harvest back into your life. So it says in verse 6, In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening do not withhold your hand, for you don't know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both will alike be good. So that's why we have to continually give. We just, we just can't do it when we think about it. We can't do it when it feels good or when it's comfortable. We have to obey God continually. There are entirely too many people that have set out on the journey of giving and said, well, I'm going to try this thing. And they'll give an offering one week or they'll give to somebody one week. And they, they think that the, the sky ought to, ought to open up and a harvest ought to just rain into their life next week. That is not the way it works, my friend. Continual obedience is what ensures a harvest. Sow your seed in the morning, sow your seed in the evening, sow it always because you don't know how God is going to work in your life. That's continual obedience. Number 10 is consistent endurance. That also ensures a harvest. Consistent endurance in giving ensures a harvest. Galatians 6, 9 says, Do not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. That's consistent endurance. Sometimes it's hard to give. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes you're strapped, and sometimes your back's against the wall, and, and, and sometimes you have more needs than the people that you're trying to bless, and sometimes you have more needs, you feel like anyway, than, than those that are in the kingdom you're trying to give to. But it is it's consistent endurance. When it's good, when it's bad, when it's somewhere in between, you must not grow weary in doing good. For in due season, at the right time, God will bring a harvest into your life if you do not give up. Continual obedience and consistent endurance, both of those ensure a harvest. And the last thing we're going to talk about today is this. That's number 11. And it says, givers must prepare to give. 
You know, sometimes giving is spontaneously directed by the Holy Spirit. You can be at the gas station or you can be at the grocery store or simply run into somebody, you know, on the street or at work or at church or wherever the case may be, and the Holy Spirit will impulsively tell you to give to these people. And when he does, we should be quick to obey him and respond in moments like these. However, this should not be the only time that true heartfelt givers seek for opportunities to give. The fact is, if giving is really in your heart, you're going to look for occasions and prepare in advance to give into the kingdom. And you have to prepare yourself in order to do that. Think for just a second about the woman that poured the costly perfume on Jesus' feet while he was in the Pharisee's house. Uh, when, when she heard he was there, she made preparations at home to bring that and pour it on his feet. This could not have been a spontaneous you know, offering that she poured on him because she wouldn't have had all of that perfume with her. What she did do was she heard that he was at a certain address and at home she made preparations to go and give Jesus her very best. She made a plan and she prepared to give her best to Jesus Christ. The Christians in the first century church, when they wanted to give into the kingdom, the only way they could do it was sell their possessions and then give generously to the work of God because they didn't have the extra that you and I have today. I just wonder if, if God asked you to sell something that you owned that was in excess of your needs in order to meet the needs of someone that had lack, I just wonder, would you do it? What Would I do it? It's, it's really something to consider. These guys sold their possessions so that they could help start the church that is going to spread around the world. You and I are a part of that harvest today of those guys, those first century saints selling their possessions, making preparations so they could give into the kingdom of God. And if God asks you to do that today, you have to ask yourself, would I do it? When it's truly in your heart to have the lifestyle of a giver, sometimes you've got to be willing to make lifestyle adjustments in order to be able to give. This means you might have to look for a way to save money or cut expenses so that you can give. I, I mean, think about it. What if folks stop, you know, buying their five and six and seven dollar coffee every day, sometimes twice a day? Think about what you could give into the kingdom. Now, I'm going to, I'm just going to say this thing. I don't mean that you have necessarily got to do it, but I just wonder on any given weekend during college football season, if the money that's spent at just one football stadium, if that was given into the kingdom or given to the needy, what could that do? Now, I'm not saying that, that you've got to stop watching football and you've got to stop drinking coffee. I'm just telling you to think that if you're going to be a true heartfelt giver, sometimes you've got to make preparations in order to give. Well, hey, I've got to get out of here. It's been good being with you today. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Friday's edition of Take 5. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day. Remember, friend, trust the Lord. He will never fail you.